So the theorem we're interested in proving today is the following. Every vector space has a basis. So you might have seen in linear algebra that for finite dimensional vector spaces, we can show that they have a basis, but this actually also holds for infinite dimensional vector spaces. So first of all, we need some preliminary notions, but the tool we're going to use is called Sohn's Lemma, and it's a very powerful tool that is used a lot in mathematics, especially in algebra and in geometry. So let X be a set, we denote its power set by P of X, this is just the set of all subsets of X. We say that a chain in P of X is some set of subsets, such that C is non-empty, and uh, we say that the inclusion relation is totally ordered on C. In other words, if we have A and B and C, then either A is contained in B or B is contained in A. We say that C has a supremum if there exists some set that contains every set inside of C. So now we're ready to state Sohn's lemma, so let's go over to the next board and do that. So we're now ready to state Sohn's lemma. So the lemma says that if we have a subset of the power set with the following two properties, B is non-empty and every chain C inside of B has a supremum which is also inside of B, then B has what's called a maximal element. That is, there is some element M that is not contained in any other element of B. Now, as a side note, inside of the standard axioms of the Miller-Frankel set theory, the axiom of choice, which some of you might have heard of, is actually equivalent to the statement of Thorne's lemma. So given one, we can prove the other inside the standard axioms. So now that we have this tool, let's see how we can use it uh, to prove that every vector space has a basis. So equipped with Thorne's lemma, we are now ready to prove the theorem. So let V be a vector space that is not the zero space. If V is the zero space, then by definition, its basis is just an empty set. Let B be this set, all subsets of V that are non-empty and linearly independent. Now recall that a set S is linearly independent if for every finite collection of vectors V1 up to Vn in S, there is no non-trivial linear combination of them. In other words, if we take any scalars and we get this type of equation, then all of the scalars are actually equal to zero. Uh, this also coincides with the definition of linear independence for finite sets, which you might know from linear algebra. So we want to show two things so that we can use Thorne's lemma. So the first is that we want to show that B is non-empty, but this is true because every non-zero vector is a linearly independent set. So because we chose V to be non-zero, we just take some element V and then this set is linearly independent, so it is inside of B. Next, we want to show that every chain has a supremum. So uh, if we define this set C to be just the union of all the sets S inside of this chain, then clearly it's a supremum. Every set S is contained inside of C, so it suffices to show that this set is inside of B. In other words, it's linearly independent. So let's do that. So on the previous board, we had this set B, we had some chain inside of it, and we defined the supremum of the chain, and we wanted to show that it's linearly independent. So we take some vectors V1 up to Vn in C, and some scalars alpha1 up to alpha n. So by the definition of C, and because uh, this set is a chain, there is already some set S0 inside of the chain, such that V1 up to Vn are inside of S0. You can uh, think of this C actually as an increasing union where you take each set here is contained in the next set. So, uh, because they're already in S0, we know that if we have a trivial linear combination, then all of these scalars are already zero. This is just the statement that S0 is linearly independent. So we conclude that C is linearly independent. In other words, C is inside of B. This allows us to use Thorne's lemma to claim that there is a maximal element inside of B, so a maximal linearly independent set. Now, some of you might have seen that in linear algebra, sometimes a basis can be defined as a maximally linearly independent set, but we will also prove this. So there is this B and B, maximal, and we claim that B is a basis of C. So on the previous board, we obtained this maximal subset inside of B, and we wanted to show that it's actually a basis of our vector space. So we need to check two things. 
First of all, a B is linearly independent, but this is true just because by, by definition we took it to be inside of B. The other thing is that we need to show that it's tan. In other words, any vector inside of our vector space V can be written as a linear combination of vectors of B. So let's do that. So let's take a vector in V. B is maximal with respect to being linearly independent. So if we add the vector V to it, we get that uh, this set has to be linearly dependent. Now, this means that there are some V1 up to Vn in B and some scalars such that we get a non-trivial linear combination that gives us zero. Now, I'm going to let you think about why alpha n plus 1 here has to be non-zero, but assuming that it is, we get that Vn plus 1 can be written as this linear combination of vectors from B, and this shows us that B is span. This gives us that B is a basis, and that finishes our proof. Now, I'll finish off by noting that this proof is non-constructive because we are using Tsong's lemma. In other words, we can't actually find this basis. We can't name it. But this is always going to be true for proofs where we use the axiom of choice or something equivalent. But it's still useful to know that a basis always exists.